Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to class number two of international relations in this target prelim series. I hope you have watched all the earlier classes. This is our attempt to prepare you for the upcoming prelims exam on the 16th of June. As you know, every single day <coughs> till the 11th of June at 7 p.m. we have this session where we discuss about 25 probable questions for this year's prelims examination. It's a subject wise class and I really hope that you have been watching all of these. In case you have missed out any of the earlier classes, please do attend that. In yesterday's class, we discussed 25 questions from international relations. And I'm very glad to see a lot of you agreed to what I suggested. That is mark the answer with you and then see if you get it right or wrong and tell me in the comment section. So many of you did tell me in the comment section how many you got. So great job. Once again, I would request you to do the same. I will show you the questions, give you some time take a pen and a paper, mark your answer, whichever you think should be the correct answer. And then when I show you the answer, you should compare whether you got it right or wrong. At the end of it, do tell me in the comment section, how many did you get right? Okay, so let's begin with the first question for today's class. Question number one is this. Consider the following statements with regards to India Russia relations. Number one. The Kudankulam nuclear power plant is being built in Karnataka with the technical assistance of Russia. Second, over half of India's conventional submarines are of Soviet design. And third, India is actively engaged in importing hydrocarbons from the Russian Far West. How many of these given statements are correct? Think about it for a second. Think about all these statements and then mark your answer and then we'll discuss it. I'm giving you a few seconds. You have to tell how many of these statements are correct? As you know, India has been co uh, collaborating with Russia on a lot of things, including defense, nuclear. In that context, let's look at the first statement. The Kudankulam nuclear power plant, a lot in the news, is being built with the help of Russia. That part is true, but it is not in Karnataka. It is in Tamil Nadu. It's in the coastal part of Tamil Nadu. You should know the nuclear power plants are usually built nearby the coastal areas because they require a source of water. First statement thus is wrong because it's not in Karnataka. Second says over half of our conventional submarines are of Soviet design. Yes, that is true. Conventional submarine basically means those that don't run on nuclear energy. They run on diesel as usual submarines, orthodox submarines used to do. Third. India is actively engaged in importing hydrocarbon from Russian Far West. Is it true? No. So most of Russia's hydrocarbon resources are not in Far West. They are in Far East actually. So if you look at Russia's hydrocarbon resources from where they get most of it, it's actually in Far East and not Far West. That is why third statement also is wrong. The answer thus would be only one of them is correct. The answer here is A. If you look at far west, far west would be an area which is close to Eastern Europe. So we are not talking about that. It's actually far east area, the other side. So this is where India has been actively engaged. The answer thus here is A. I hope you got that one right. Moving on to question number two. Consider the following statements with regards to India US relations. Number one, in June 2023, ISRO signed with NASA the Artemis Accords to participate in peaceful and sustainable civil exploration of the deep ocean. Second, effective in June 2019, the US decided to withdraw duty-free benefits to Indian exporters under GSP, that is Generalized System of Preferences, program affecting India's export-oriented sectors such as farmer, textile, agri-products, etc. Third, in 2021, the US joined the International Solar Alliance headquartered in India. How many of these are correct? Again, take a few seconds of your time. Think about these three and then mark the answer in the piece of paper. As you know, India has been collaborating with the US increasingly in the past few years to offset our growing problems with with China. In that context, we have signed a lot of agreements with US with different agencies. First one, ISRO, NASA, they have signed an Artemis Accord. But see, it's very logical. If ISRO and NASA signing the accord, it won't be about deep ocean, right? It would be about the outer space. So Artemis Accords had been signed, but again, if ISRO and NASA are signing it, the probability is that they are not going under the ocean for that. They are actually exploring space because these are space agencies. So first here is wrong. 
Second, the US right to withdraw the GSP, that is true. So the US runs a program, the GSP, under which they give some facilities to developing countries around the world. And they say, if you send products to the US, we will not impose any import tax on you or we will impose a reduced import tax to give push to your exports. India was included in this GSP. But when Donald Trump became the president, he said that no, India does not deserve this because India is not a developing country, we are a developed country. He wanted India also to give the same treatment to American products such as their uh, bikes, Harley Davidson, etc., which India did not agree. So India was removed from this GSP. Third, interestingly, is also correct. So when ISA was first created and the Paris Climate Summit, it was only open to tropical countries. But later on, it was open to every country, whichever country wanted to join. And that is when US also joined in 2021. It is the first such international organization which has its headquarters in India. It was an initiative of India and France at the Paris Climate Summit in 2015. So second and third are correct. Two statements here are correct. The answer here would be B. First statement is wrong because it is not about the deep ocean. It is about the outer space. So again, second, third, correct. First statement wrong. I hope you got this one right. Moving on to question number three then. The US has initiated Operation Prosperity Guardship, a multinational security initiative to ensure security in which of the following? The Red Sea, the State of Malacca, the Panama Canal or the Mediterranean Sea? Think of it and mark your answer. Not a difficult question. Now, this was a lot in the news, as you would have seen ever since the, I won't say war, but ever since the conflict between Israel and Hamas began, a lot of merchant vessels in the Red Sea were being attacked by the Houthi Yemen, by the Yemen Houthis. And to counter that, America wanted to ensure that they give proper protection to all these merchant vessels because if they don't go to the towards the Red Sea, if they take a longer route, the international trade would be disrupted. So basically, in order to safeguard international trade, America started this operation called the Red Sea and they invited other countries also to participate here. India, for example, has not participated. They have asked India also to participate. So this is about posting Navy in that area so that they can deter the Houthi rebels from Yemen. So the answer here is Red Sea. Do remember the name? Prosperity Guardian led by the US. Next question, consider the following statements with regards to India Oman relations. Number one, India Oman investment fund was started as a 50 50 joint venture between SBI that is State Bank of India and Oman investment authority with the first tranche of 100 million American dollars followed by 200 million American dollars. Second, the Gandhi Peace Prize 2019 was conferred on late uh, HM Sultan Kabus in recognition of his leadership in strengthening the ties between India and Oman and also the efforts to bring peace in the Gulf region. Third, Oman is at the gateway of the state of Hormuz through which India imports one fifth of its oil import. Now, Oman is a very, very, very important part of India's neighborhood. We usually don't talk about it whenever we think of India's neighborhood. We actually think of India's uh, east. We think of Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, even Maldives, but we don't talk about Oman. Well, the fact is that Oman is the nearest country in the Middle East to us. If you look at from the way of reaching them through the sea. So in that context, it's important. So think about it and see what is the correct answer. Take a few seconds, read this statement again, and then try and answer this. Okay. The answer here is all three are correct. India Oman have started a joint venture for investing in India specifically. It's a 50 50 joint venture. The Gandhi Peace Prize was offered now. See, you would have seen when our prime minister goes to a lot of these neighboring countries, he's given the highest civilian honor. Now in India, the highest civilian honor is the Bharat Ratna. But you would have seen the government of India does not usually give Bharat Ratna to foreigners. It can be given to foreigners. We have given it to some foreigners in the past, but Bharat Ratna is taken very, very, very seriously. The government does not just give it to any foreign leader, does not just give it to even in India, within India also. 
we are very careful about who deserves a Bharat Ratna and who does not. So when we have to basically return the favor of some other country when they have given our Prime Minister the highest honor, we usually return it with these kind of prizes like the Gandhi Peace Prize etc. So all these three here are correct. Oman is at the gate of the state of Hormuz which is an important area because India imports a lot of its crude oil from this part of the world and that is why having good relationship with Oman is extremely important for us. This is Oman and this is the state of Hormuz. So again, if you want this map, this is the map here. This uh, is Iran. So as you can imagine this is from here India, you can approach Oman and Iran, etc. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to organization of Islamic cooperation. Number one, the organization was established upon a decision of the historical summit which took place in Rabat, Kingdom of Morocco on 25th September 1969 following the criminal arson of Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Second, India holds the status of an observer state in the OIC. And third, Palestine is a permanent member of the OIC. Interesting, tricky question. Think about it and tell me how many of these are correct. Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC. It is one of those organizations that are also demanding reform in the UN Security Council. They have been demanding that there is no representation from the Islamic world in the UN, uh, in the UN Security Council. Sorry, I have given you the answer. That is also why they are in the news. The answer here is B, any two are correct. First is correct. It came up in 1916, more so as a reaction to what Israel was doing. It was countries coming together to support Palestine mainly, to support the cause of Palestine. Although they did not say that we are against Israel, but that was the entire agenda in the beginning. And that is why it's obvious that Palestine was given the permanent membership. India, interestingly, is not a member and not even an observer. Now, the interesting part is India has more Muslim population than most of the members of this organization. India is one of the largest Muslim population in the world. Even then, India has not been given the status of member or observer because of Pakistan. In fact, whenever uh, India is given an invitation to just participate at, as a guest, we see Pakistan protesting against it within the group. However, in the last summit, India was invited as a special guest, which Pakistan did not like, which also indicates the growing stature of India even in this part of the world. So India is not a member and not even an observer in this organization. Do remember, the answer here is B. Two of these are correct. First and third one. Second one here is wrong. Moving on to the next one. Consider the following statements with regards to Paris Club. Number one. The Paris Club is a group of mostly Western creditor countries that grew from a 1956 meeting in which Argentina agreed to meet its public creditors in Paris. Second, all 22 members of the Paris Club are members of the group called OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Third, India is not a member of the Paris Club. Think about it, mark your answer and then we'll discuss. Take a few seconds of time. Think about what should be the right answer here. Paris Club was in the news with respect to Sri Lanka specifically. It's a group of rich, wealthy nations that negotiate with those countries that have to take a loan or they have uh, exhausted all the other resources from where they can get money. They try and negotiate better terms so that the country that needs money can return it back without the pressure of IMF or the World Bank. Let's see. First statement, correct. It came up in 1956. It's mainly a, a creation from the G7. The G7 countries mainly came together and decided something like this should happen. Second is to all 22 members are members of OECD. OECD is a group of some of the richest nations in the world. So developed nations, richest nations are in OECD. India is, yes, not a member. Third and second were, uh, basically you would have known both of them. India obviously is not a member of OECD. So if this is true, then obviously this is not true. Both of these here actually are true. All the members are part of OECD and India is not a member. We are not even in OECD and that is why the answer here is C. 
all the three statements here are correct. I hope you got this one right as well. Not a difficult question to answer this one. Moving on to the next one. Which of the following nations are members of Nordic Baltic 8, also known as NB8? This is a group in Europe, NB8. Which of these are members? Latvia, Iceland, Sweden, Estonia, Norway. Think about it. It was in the news. They recently had a summit. Nordic Baltic 8 or NB8. Think of which of these are Nordic countries. Then think of which of these are Baltic countries and then might be you would be able to get to the answer. Got it? What is the correct answer here? The correct answer here is D. All of the above. All these five are actually a part of this Nordic Baltic group. Let me show you this group. So this is where this group is. It is Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. All these are members of NB8. All these are members. So these are the Nordic countries. These are the Baltic countries. This is where the Baltic Sea is. All these are members of ND8. They recently had a summit and that is why this question is relevant. Next, about India-Australia. Consider the following statements about India-Australia relations. Number one, in 2014, Australia signed a uranium supply deal with India. First of its kind with a country that is a non-signatory of NPT in recognition of India's impeccable non-proliferation record. Second, India and Australia have an annual 2 plus 2 dialogue. And third, both countries are members of Indian Ocean Dream Association or IORA. Think of this and let me know or mark in your copy what should be the correct answer. How many of these are correct? Australia, as you know, has one of the highest reserves or the largest reserves of uranium. It's a major export of uranium. That is why we also have the Australia agreement. Australia have been very, very, uh, very particular about which country should get its hands on uranium and not. They have made it a point to ensure that countries that are a part of NPT, only those countries should have uranium. NPT is Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty that says that any country that had nuclear weapons before 1967 should be allowed to keep it those who got it after this should surrender it. So basically in simple terms, the five permanent members of security council are those five countries that tested their nuclear weapons before 1967. They should be the only ones allowed to keep it. India has not signed it because we think it is discriminatory. Let's come back then. First is correct. Australia has allowed India that we would be able to supply uranium to although India is not a member of the NPT, which is a big, big, big achievement for India. Australia is not the only country that has made such an exception. Even Japan has made such an exception. It is believed that if you want to build a nuclear power plant in your country, if Japan does not want it, it will be impossible for you to build because there are so many components of nuclear power plants that are only built by Japanese companies. So you have to be on good terms with Japan. Japan also is extremely serious about nuclear non-proliferation. Because they have the right to be. They are the only country in the world that has gone through that atom bomb. But for India, they have made an exception looking at India's record. India has a nuclear doctrine where we have promised no first use policy. We have never threatened any country with our nuclear might. Second is true with Australia, US, Russia, Japan, etc. We do have a 2 plus 2 dialogue. 2 plus 2 basically where the foreign and the defense ministers meet every single year. Third is also correct. Both India and Australia are members of Indian Ocean Rim Association, IORA. Both of the countries are common members. The answer thus here is C. All these three are correct. I hope you got this one right as well. Next one. Consider the following statements with regards to Treaty on Conventional Armed Forces in Europe. That is recently in the news. Number one. The treaty was signed in 1990 and then fully ratified in 1992. Second, it aimed to prevent massing of conventional armed forces by NATO and Warsaw Pact countries near mutual borders during the Cold War. Third, 
it placed limits on deployment of conventional military forces in Europe and played a significant role in reducing tension and armed buildup in this area. And fourth, Russia officially withdrew from the treaty in May 2023. How many of these are correct? There are four statements and not three. Read them carefully, think about it and mark your answer. This was recently in the news. Warsaw Pact was a reaction to NATO after Second World War had ended. America created NATO with America, Canada, Western European countries. Russia or USSR rather, they wanted to respond. So they created their own grouping called the Warsaw Pact where USSR and Eastern European countries came together. But it was never as powerful or as, as significant as NATO. It is in the treaty was in the news because of the statement number four. So this is why it was in the news. Russia officially withdrew from the treaty in May 2023 because they said that we would like to place more soldiers at our borders. First is correct. It was ratified in 1992, signed in 1990. The difference is signing of the treaty means a representative of the country has signed it. Ratification is the next step. Ratification means that the country's parliament has voted and has passed the treaty. So for any treaty to come into force, the country's parliament has to pass it. That step is called ratification. That took place in 1992. Second is also correct. The aim was to prevent huge buildup of military on the border and to ensure that NATO and the Warsaw Pact forces don't come face to face in large numbers. And the third statement is also correct. All four here are correct. The answer here is D. All of the above are correct. As I said again, this treaty was in the news. Why? Because Russia recently withdrew from it in 2023. So it is relevant for the examination. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to OPEC. First, it is headquartered in Vienna, Austria. Second, OPEC nations produce about 30% of the world's crude oil. And third, in 2016, in response to the falling oil prices by significant increase in US shale oil output, OPEC signed an agreement with 10 other oil producing nations to create a new group called OPEC Plus. How many of these are correct? Again, mark your answer in your sheet. Think of it. Now, if you think of this group, you would think that OPEC, which has most of the countries from the Middle East only, Saudi Arabia is the largest member of OPEC. So the common sense would think that OPEC headquarters, why would it be in Europe, right? That is the first common sensical react way to think about it. That OPEC is an organization that might be headquartered it's in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, something like that. But that is not true. In fact, OPEC is headquartered in Vienna, Austria, which is very, very interesting. So Middle Eastern countries, because they could not decide that from where or in which country should we have the headquarter, they decided to go for a neutral place. So they chose Vienna, Austria. Second is also correct. And so is the third statement. In the past decade or so, US has seen, US is very, I, I don't want to say a fortunate country, but you have to see, see, US is a country that used to import so much oil and all of a sudden they are so lucky that they found shale gas and shale oil in their own country and then they started taking it out in such large numbers that from such a huge importer of oil US has become a net exporter of oil now so not only are they not buying oil from other countries they're actually selling it to other countries now including to India as well so when the global oil supply increased considerably because of American output there was much more oil in the market. The prices were falling down. So the country decided to come together because the entire point of creating OPEC was to control the prices. OPEC plus again became a group, a cartel kind of a thing so that they can decide how much to produce so that they can regulate the oil prices in the international market. All these three are correct. The answer here is C. All the three are correct. Moving on to the next one. So here are three statements about a specific nation 
you have to tell which of these nations is the one on which all these three statements fit first it is one of the oldest countries in the world that managed to remain uncolonized by european powers even though 90 percent of africa was colonized by european nations first statement i think even first statement itself should be good enough for you to answer but don't worry second clue the largest lake in the nation is lake tana and is the source of the blue nile river third this nation's calendar has 12 months of 30 days each plus five or six additional days which are sometimes also known as the 13th month of the year which country are we talking about interesting question think about it and then mark your answer think 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 i think that even the first one would be good enough Remember your chapters of world war. Think about which was the African country that was not colonized by the Europeans. On the other hand, they defeated a European country that thought they would be easily able to colonize it. It is Ethiopia. Italy was the one during the world wars that wanted to conquer Ethiopia, but Italy thought that it, they would have it easy, but Ethiopia actually defeated them first. Second, third, both of these belong to Ethiopia. Its largest lake is Lake Tana, which is the source of the famous Blue Nile River. It has all the months in the country's calendar are 12 months of 30 days each only. The extra days are shifted to the 13th month. So the answer here is Ethiopia. Moving on to the next one. The Indo-Pacific Maritime Domain Awareness, that is IPMDA was introduced by the Cord Group at the Tokyo Summit 2022. It aims to monitor dark shipping and create more comprehensive and precise real-time maritime overview of partner nations' water. Which of the following best describes the phrase dark shipping? So again, this is an initiative, IPMDA, that was launched specifically to monitor dark shipping. Which of these is dark shipping? First, Pirate ships disguised as merchant ships. Second, ships that have been abandoned. Third, submarines that are not responding to any communication. And fourth, vessels operating with its automatic identification system turned off. Think about this. This was in the news. We had discussed this earlier as well. Think of this. Mark your answer in your copy and then we'll discuss. Cord started this initiative. IPMDA objective was to control dark shipping. Got it? The answer here is D. Dark shipping basically means those vessels, means merchant vessels mainly, that do not have their automatic identification system on. So basically automatic identification system means when you are riding a ship, you have your own radar system. Your radar will tell you in the nearby area which are the other ships and vessels, etc. Your radar will automatically be able to identify which ship is that. That is through automatic identification system. But when a ship does not want to be identified, this usually happens during a conflict or a war, etc. When a ship does not want to be identified, they basically switch it off. Now, this is also done by uh, illegal elements, pirates, etc. And that is a major threat to merchant vessels around the world. So that is called dark shipping. So dark shipping are those ships and vessels that have turned off their automatic identification system. So to curtail that this system has been launched called this program has been launched rather Indo-Pacific Maritime Domain Awareness. It has been launched by COD. So the answer here is D. Moving on, consider the following statements with regards to Hamas. Number one, Hamas was created in 1987 as an offshoot of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood seeking to fulfill its agenda through violent jihad. Second, Hamas has been in power in the Gaza Strip since 2007. Third, the group as whole, or in some instances its military wing, is designated as a terrorist organization by Israel, US, European Union, Canada, India, Egypt and Japan. How many of these are correct? As you know, Hamas has been in the news because of their attack on Israel and then Israel's offensive. 
in the Gaza area. Think about it. One of the reasons or one of the things that Israel has been repeatedly saying to justify their attack is that Hamas is the official government in the Gaza area. So whatever elections were held, you might agree to it, you might not agree to it. But the result of that election, the Gaza Strip was that Hamas was chosen as the government. Second statement thus is true that they have officially been in power, kind of a chosen government. So when people question Israel that why are you going and invading Gaza, you should attack Hamas and not the common people. Their argument is that it is the common people of Gaza only that chose Hamas as their government. Right or wrong, you can agree or disagree, but that is what Israel basically gives as a reason. First statement is correct. It was created in 1987 as an offshoot of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. Third is wrong. The interesting part in the third statement is India has still not recognized Hamas as a terrorist organization. This is interesting because Israel has been repeatedly requesting India that you should categorize or recognize Hamas as a terrorist organization, but India has not done it so far. So in this entire list, India does not fit in. We have not given Hamas a designation of a terrorist organization so far. Thus, the answer here is B. Any two are correct. The first and second one are correct. Third one is wrong, mainly because of India. Moving on to the next one. Consider the following statements with regards to China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Number one, it was launched in 2013 and aims to link Southeast Asia, Central Asia, the Gulf region, Africa, Europe with a network of land and sea routes. Second, it begins via South China Sea, going towards Indochina, Southeast Asia and then around Indian Ocean, thus reaching Africa and Europe. Third, initially, it included Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar economic corridor as well. How many of these given statements are correct? With respect to China's Belt and Road Initiative. Think about it, mark your answer, and then we'll discuss. As you know, China's BRI, Belt and Road Initiative, remains a lot in the news. Around the G20 summit also it was in the news because the only G7 country, that is Italy, that had joined this program, walked out of it. So now Italy also is not a part of BRI. So no G7 country is a part of BRI now. This is China's major or it's a very big dream project of Xi Jinping specifically to build infrastructure around the entire world to connect China with other parts of the world. First is correct, launched in 2013, the aim is to link Southeast Asia to other parts of the world, including Africa, Europe, Gulf region, etc. Second is also true, there are various connectivity uh, parks or there are various connectivity routes that have been planned. It begins by South China Sea, goes towards Indochina. When you say Indochina, it usually means areas such as Vietnam, Cambodia, etc. Southeast Asia, Indian Ocean, etc. Third, interestingly, is also true. So initially, it was thought that even this corridor will become a part of it. Then obviously, India decided not to join it. India has had many objections. Obviously, we don't want to be a part of a project that uh, is spearheaded by China. Secondly, the CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, also became a part of this project. It goes to India's area. It goes to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which is our territory. So India basically did not want it. But initially, yes, it is true. Initially, the project did include Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar corridor as well. Again, initially is a key word here. Later on, it was removed, but initially, yes, that is true. The answer thus is C. All these three statements are correct. I hope you got this one right as well. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to India, Maldives relations. Number one. Under Operation Cactus of 1988, the Indian Armed Forces held the government of Maldives in neutralization of the coup attempt. Second, in 2022, National College for Policing and Law Enforcement was established in Maldives by India. Number three, the Greater Malay Connectivity Project, which will consist of 6.74 km long bridge, causeway link between Malay and nearby islands of Vilangli, 
Goli Falhu and Thilafushi, all of these are being built by India. How many of these are correct? India Maldives relationship has been in the news ever since a new Maldives president has taken over. Think about it, mark your answer. Can you read about India Maldives relationship? We all think about the 1988 incident, Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister. A group of militants from Sri Lanka, from LTTE had gone to Maldives, hoping to overthrow the government, hoping to get the entire country under their control. There was an emergency call made to the Indian government and our Indian armed forces were sent immediately. That was called Operation Cactus, so it is true. In the past few years, we have invested a lot of money in Maldives. Their National College for Policing Law Enforcement was established by India, correct? And even the third one is correct. The Greater Malay Connectivity Project is the largest infrastructure project in Maldives. So understand, Maldives is just a group of many small islands together. And in order to have good connectivity, in order to have a prosperous country, there has to be connectivity between the islands. If you have 20, 30, 50 islands, small islands which are not even connected to each other. How will you develop as a country? Most of the people live in the capital Malay, but the other islands also need to be connected to it. And that is where the Greater Malay Connectivity Project has become a boon for the country. It's the largest infrastructure project in Maldives. It is being built by India. That is why experts say that what Maldives is doing or what the new president is doing is not fair to India because we have held Maldives in innumerable ways in the past, including spending so much money on them. The answer here is C again. All the three statements are correct about India Maldives relations. <clears throat> Moving on to the next statement. Identify the nation that has the following features. Again, you have to tell which of the nations are we talking about. First, in the west lies Lake Tangengika, the world's second deepest lake. Second. Northeastern part of the country has Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in Africa and the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. This second statement is a very big hint. Mount Kilimanjaro, you should know. Third, also in the north is a world famous Nagorgo crater, which is the world's largest intact volcanic caldera. Think of it. I would say if you know the second statement, that should be good enough hint for you which is the country that has the tallest mountain in Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro. You should be able to get to the answer. Think of it. The answer in this case is Tanzania. It is Tanzania that has Africa's tallest mountain that is Mount Kilimanjaro. It is also or to the west of it, in the west rather, in the country lies Lake Tanganyika, which is the world's second deepest lake, is also the home to the world's largest intact volcanic caldera. It is very, very famous crater. It is Tanzania. Moving on to the next one. The 17 point agreement, sometimes in the news, was an agreement between which of the following pairs? North and South Korea, Australia and New Zealand, China and Tibet, USA and Canada. 17 point agreement. Think of it and mark your answer. Seventeen point agreement. The correct answer in this case is C China and Tibet. Many decades ago it was China and Tibet that signed this agreement. The idea was again to have an arrangement so that both the sides can agree to what should be the relationship between the two. Tibet thought that they will get autonomy with this agreement. However, the Chinese, as always, decided not to follow on, on this agreement. Even after signing it, they said, no, we will. Uh, Tibet is not an autonomous territory. We will capture Tibet or Tibet is a part of China only. Even today, Tibet does not have an identity as an independent country around the world, although they do have a government in exile but they still are struggling to implement this agreement. It was an agreement signed between China and Tibet. 
it was recently in the news because again there are always demands from tibet that we should implement this agreement with china next question consider the following statements with regards to the south china sea number 1 china claims up to 90% of the sea with its 9 dash line map and has physically expanded islands and constructed military installations to assert the control of china second it is controlled by the sorry it is connected by the taiwan strait with the east china sea and by the luzon strait with the philippine sea third the scarborough shoal in the south china sea is claimed both by vietnam and china how many of these statements are correct think about it south china sea is a topic it is always in the news there are many countries in southeast asia that have a problem with china's claim over the south china sea in the last class also we had a question where we studied about how india has taken part in joint military or joint naval exercises in this part of the world first china claim 90% of the sea is 9 dash line absolutely true i told you in the uh, in yesterday's class as well how china has just artificially created a line on the map with using nine dashes and that has been called a nine dash line second is also connected by the taiwan strait with the east china sea third is wrong so while china and vietnam do have some boundary issue but the scarborough shoal is actually the island with which philippines has an issue with china so philippines believe that this is their territory while chinese believe that this is their territory as you have discussed philippines has, has even gone to the un clause against china their tribunal had given the uh, decision in favor of philippines but it did not really matter to china so vietnam philippines other countries also do have an issue with china but this particular issue of the scarborough shoal this is an issue that china shares with philippines and not vietnam the answer thus is b first and second are correct the third one is wrong the reason is that here it will be philippines so do remember that moving on to the next one consider the following statements with regards to the recent g20 summit that india hosted first the global biofuel alliance was launched with nine initiating members india us brazil argentina bangladesh italy mauritius south africa and the uae second mou was signed between governments of india us saudi european union uae france germany and israel to establish the imec that is india middle east economic corridor third g20 countries promised to work towards tripling global renewable energy capacity by 2050 how many of these are correct think about it i am sure all of you would have read the g20 summit and its outcomes in a lot of detail it is an important topic after all it was hosted by india first time ever it was a big big show everyone said that this is the best ever organized g20 what is the correct answer here let's look at it first statement global biofuel alliance it was launched by nine countries and this these are those nine countries this is absolutely true india as you know has been focusing a lot on biofuel within the country there are many policies being launched the government of india for example has launched policy such as the gobardhan initiative we have also been focusing on setting up plants to uh, manufacture compressed biogas so use it as a fuel etc second statement the imec was signed but interestingly israel was not a part of this so israel was not a part of this agreement israel is one of those countries through which the project will go if you see if you look at the entire plan of the project in that project israel is an important part but this imec project or the imec mou that it was that was signed that was not where israel participated third g20 countries said we will triple global renewable energy capacity by 2050 is it right no not by 2050 then by which year tell me in the comment section tell me in the comment section apart from where you will tell me the score 
not by 2050 but then by which year was it later than 2050 was it earlier than 2050 which year specifically by which the G20 countries will triple their global renewable energy capacity it's just a promise on paper whether they are able to do that or not remains to be seen the correct answer thus is one only any one of these is correct the first one second as I said is wrong because of Israel third is wrong you have to tell me which of the years or which year specifically has been targeted if not 2050 <laughs> next one Consider the following statements with regards to the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Number one, the deal brokered by the UN and Turkey was signed in Istanbul in July 2022. Second, the initiative specifically allows for commercial food and fertilizer, including ammonia, exports from three key Russian ports in the Black Sea, Odessa, Kronomorsk and Pivdeni. Third, Joint Coordination Center was established to monitor the implementation of this initiative. It is hosted in Istanbul and includes representatives from Russia, Turkey, Ukraine and UN. The UN also acts as a secretariat for the center. How many of these are correct? It's a very, very important topic, the Black Sea Green Initiative. Think about it and then mark your answer before we discuss this. Read it carefully, think about it. <clears throat> Ever since the Ukraine-Russia war has started, the global prices of food have increased because both these nations are major exporters of grain. In case of Ukraine, they also export a lot of sunflower oil to the world. The oil prices have increased in order to make sure that the global supply of grains is maintained this agreement was signed, mediated by UN and Turkey. So first statement is absolutely true. What about the second one? Second is not true. Why? These are Ukrainian ports and not Russian ports. See, this is just commonsensical. Russia is the attacking country. So they are the ones who are attacking these ports in Ukraine. So Russia has to agree that, okay, I will not attack if merchant ships come out of these ports and they are carrying grains. So it's not the Russian ports that are in danger anyway, because Ukraine is not attacking any uh, Russian port. It is the Russians who are targeting the Ura Ukrainian ports. And that is why it's the Ukraine's ports in the Black Sea, which have been given this leeway that, okay, if grains come out of your uh, ports by merchant ships, you will not attack. Third one is correct. Because Turkey is the one that has played the mediator role. There is a coordination center that has been set up in Turkey in Istanbul. It has representatives from all the countries, Russia, Turkey, Ukraine, and even the UN. So first and third are correct. The answer here would be B. Any two are correct. Second one is wrong because as I said, these are Ukrainian ports and not Russian ports. Ukraine is a major exporter of grains. It's a major exporter of sunflower oil as well. And that is why... It's important for many countries around the world, especially affluent countries, that they get a constant supply of grains from Ukraine. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to the Abraham Accords. Number one, UAE was the first Arab country to formally announce its normalization of relationship with Israel under the Abraham Accords. Second, in September 2020, the US mediated the Abraham Accord between UAE, Bahrain and Israel, promising to normalize ties between these Arab Gulf states and Israel. Third, Sudan also signed the accords in 2021. How many of these are correct? Think about it, mark your answer and then we'll discuss. Abraham Accords was one of the biggest achievements of the tenure of Donald Trump when he was the American president. He had said that he is looking forward to maintain and to have peace in the Middle East. He was the one who worked towards Abraham Accords. This was an initiative to bring Israel and the Arab countries on the table to normalize the relationship. And they were successful in doing that starting with UAE. UAE has normalized relationship with Israel. 
Now, interestingly, Saudi Arabia was not a part of these accords, but even with Saudi Arabia, the relationship of Israel has improved drastically. That is why you will see that these countries like UAE, Saudi Arabia, that used to always be in support of Palestine and always be against Israel. This time around, they have not spoken up against Israel as such. They might not have supported Israel, but they have not spoken up against it. So Abraham Accord has a major role to play there. After the beginning, when uh, UAE, Bahrain and Israel basically came together, other countries have also signed it. Sudan also interestingly signed it in 2021. This is an interesting fact because we assume that Abraham Accord or the problem that Israel would have would only be with the Middle Eastern countries. So what does Sudan, Sudan have to do? It's an African country, but Sudan also is very close to that region. It also has a history and that is why Sudan also has signed this pact saying that we also would normalize relationship with Israel. So all these three are correct. Even Sudan has become a part of the Abraham Accords now since 2021. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, IPEF. Number one. It is a US-led initiative which aims to strengthen the economic partnership between participating countries to enhance resilience, sustainability, inclusiveness, economic growth, fairness in the Indo-Pacific region. Second, India is a member of the IPEF. Third, it works on four pillars, fair and resilient trade, infrastructure, clean energy, and decarbonization, tax and anti-corruption. How many of these are correct? This was in the news IPEF. We discussed about this multiple times during our CNAs as well in the past. So I hope you have all read about it. Think about it and mark your answer. America, as you know, along with other European countries has been focusing a lot on the Indo-Pacific region. They are trying to find new partnerships in the Indo-Pacific region, trying to counter the spread of China trying to make sure that they are able to forge as many partnerships as possible. A lot of these countries are under Chinese influence. They have taken a lot of debt from China. It's a US led initiative, which is absolutely true. India has become a part of it. Yes, that is also true. India is expecting that we might get some technology transfer as a part of this initiative. Whether it happens or not remains to be seen. It does work on four pillars, as I mentioned here, fair and resilient trade, infrastructure, that is second one, clean energy, decarbonization, the third one, tax and corruption, the fourth one, all these are correct. The answer thus is C. All the three given statements here are correct. I hope you got this one right as well. Next question. Recently, an agreement was signed to build the Rasht Astara Railway between which of the following pairs of nations as part of international north-south transport corridor INSTC. Azerbaijan, Iran, Iran and Russia, Russia and Azerbaijan or Russia and Turkey. Very interesting and important. India is also part of INSTC, international north-south transport corridor. As you know, it is a project which connects India to Central Asian countries, to Russia, even though they might not have direct connectivity, but it's a project that involves multiple countries to build better connectivity. It ends at India's Mumbai port. As a part of this, it's an old initiative. It has not really culminated, but now some pace, uh, some pace is being seen or some developments are being seen here with Rush Astara railways being built. The answer here is Iran and Russia. Iran and Russia, the two countries have recently signed an agreement that they will start the construction of the Rush Astara Railway, which is a part of International North-South Transport Corridor. This is the International North-South Transport Corridor. As I said, the expectation is that we would be able to get connectivity from Russia through Central Asia. We would have a place for example, the Central Asian countries are landlocked. So India does not have a way to actually trade with them in large quantities and large numbers. Although they might have a lot of mineral reserves, that is a disadvantage India has. So India is hoping that with the interaction North-South Transport Corridor, we would be able to 
curtail that disadvantage and we would be able to offset that. Let's hope that this does not just remain an agreement and it actually goes ahead and culminates. Next question. Recently, which of the following nation was readmitted to the Arab League after being suspended in 2011? Syria, Morocco, Yemen or Bahrain? One of these countries was suspended from the Arab League in 2011, but recently it was readmitted. So it's a proper current affairs based question. Think of it, mark your answer. I'm giving you a few seconds. Recently in the news because of its readmission to the Arab League. The answer here is Syria. Syria is a country that has been going through a lot of conflict, civil war, with a lot of interference from the other countries around the world, including Russia, US also indirectly, Turkey. Syria has now again been readmitted to the Arab League. It was removed earlier in 2011. Next question. Consider the following statements with regards to India's involvement in the Arctic. Number one. Becoming an observer state of the Arctic Council in 2013 strengthened India's Arctic presence. Second, initiatives such as the Himalayan Research Station, Multi-Sensor Mood Observatory, and Northernmost Atmospheric Laboratory showcase India's commitment to the Arctic research. Third, India launched its first scientific expedition to the Arctic Ocean in 2007. How many of these are correct? Think about it. Mark your answer and then I'll tell you a few more things about the Arctic. Read all three statements carefully and then mark your answer. India has a research station Himadri in Arctic. India was an observer state or has been an observer state since 2013. This is true. Second and third are also true. The answer here is C. It is also in the news because recently, just a few months back, India for the first time ever has launched a winter time expedition to Arctic. Before that, whenever an expedition goes to Arctic, whenever the scientists go to Arctic from India specifically, they used to go at summer months. Summer months basically were April to October. But a few months back, first time ever, India has become one of the few countries in the world where a winter expedition has been sent, where they will have nights 24 hours, they will not be able to see the sun but they will be able to conduct certain experiments from the research station that includes India and the list of very handful of countries that have launched winter expedition to Arctic as well. That is why it is in the news. The answer here is C. All three are correct. These were our questions. This was the second class for international relations. I hope you got most of them right. Do tell me in the comment section how many of these 25 did you get right? How many of you Learn something new. I hope that your preparation for the 16th of June is going right on track. There are a lot more classes coming up every day at 7 p.m. Do join in to refresh some topics, to revise and also to learn something new. All the very best. I'll see you soon in one of the next sessions. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.